Hello students, I am Mrs. Kavita Upadhyay, your English teacher. I welcome all the students of class 9 to today's English class. Students, today we are going to start a very important topic of English grammar, tenses. Students, learning tenses is very important if you wish to write correct sentences in English. This topic will be covered in three parts and this is the first part of the topic. Now students, objectives of today's lesson are to let you know the forms of tenses. We will see how many forms of tenses are there. Then to tell you the structure of different types of sentences in the simple present, the simple past and the simple future tense. These three tenses we are going to study in detail. The simple present tense, the simple past tense and the simple future tense. And we will tell you the structure of different types of sentences in these three tenses to tell you the uses of the simple present, the simple past and the simple future tense. Now read the following sentences. He learns his lesson properly. He learnt his lesson yesterday. I will learn my lesson tomorrow. These are three sentences before you and the verbs in these three sentences are learns, learnt and will learn. What is the difference in these three sentences? Yes, it is the time of action which is different in all the three sentences. The verb tells that this taking place in the present time. Learns refers to present time. Learnt is used with yesterday and it refers to past time. Will learn is used with tomorrow and it refers to future time. What is the relationship between time and tense? Students, this is present. And if we go backwards, this is past. And if we move forward in time, this is future. The tense of a verb shows the time of an action or event. The verb shows the time of action. The verb may refer to the present, the past or the future time. <coughs> a verb can be in any of the three tenses, the present, the past or the future and all the three tenses are further divided into four forms each. Present time, past time and future time. These are divided into four forms each. Indefinite or simple, continuous or progressive, perfect and perfect continuous. So in all we have 12 tenses, four for each, present, past and future. So we have present indefinite or simple present, present continuous or present progressive, present perfect and then present perfect continuous. For past, we have past indefinite or simple past, past continuous or past progressive, past perfect and past perfect continuous. For future, we have future indefinite or simple future, future continuous or future progressive, future perfect and future perfect continuous. Now let us see what these tenses denote. <coughs> indefinite or simple, Form. It just states an action. Continuous or progressive shows that action is going on. Perfect form shows that action is completed. And perfect continuous form shows action began earlier but still going on. Students, perfect means complete. So action completed but perfect continuous. Perfect means complete and continuous means continuing at the same time. So some part of it is completed and it is still going on. So action began earlier but still going on. <coughs> now students, before beginning to learn tenses, we must be aware of forms of verb which are used in different types of tenses. Simple, present, simple past, past participle, ing form. These are four forms of verb 
in english we do not have future form to tell future we use modal auxiliaries will or shall simple present form we call it v1 simple past form we call it v2 past participle form we will call it v3 and ing form we will call v plus ing verb plus ing so first verb is called simple past is called past participle form is called and ing form is calling you see simple past and past participle form are made by adding ed to call these are called regular verbs where we get v2 and v3 by adding ed to v1 next is teach v2 is taught v3 is taught and ving is teaching you see first form is teach second form taught it is totally different word and third form is same as v2 so this is irregular verb because second form and third form are not made by adding ed to the first form the same is the case with come came come ed is not used it is also irregular coming is the ing form cut 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 all three forms are same then cutting it is also irregular verb go went gone these are different from the first ed is not used so it is irregular and going is the ing form of the verb so you must learn different forms of verbs so that you may write sentences correctly <coughs> simple present or the present indefinite tense the sentence structure first we will see how to write affirmative sentences in simple present tense for the first and the second person and also the third person plural subjects first person second person and third person plural subjects i and we are the first person subjects you is second person subject they is third person plural ram and sham these are two singulars added by and it makes them plural so plural subject in third person are they and nouns added together etc the rule for writing sentence in simple present tense is subject plus v1 the first form of the verb like i like mangoes they go to school dogs bark we have just used v1 with the subject i like they go dogs bark but for the third person singular subjects example he she it one or a singular noun we have different rule subject plus v1 plus s or es we add s or es to the first form of the verb if the subject is third person singular like he she it one or singular noun like ram a liger name of a place person or thing singular that is singular subject the dog barks she goes to school see here we have added s to the verb and here we have added es to the verb because the subject is third person singular the dog is a singular noun and she is a singular pronoun how to write negative sentences in simple present tense for the first person or the second person or the third person plural subject subject plus do not plus v1 we use do not when the subject is in first person in the second person or is in the third person but is plural like i do not like mangoes you do not write with a pen they do not clean their room i is in first person you is in second person and they is third person plural so we have used do not with these subjects 
and then v1 the first form of the verb is used but for the third person singular subject we have different rule subject plus does not instead of do not we use does not remember we used s or es with first form of the verb when we wrote affirmative sentences for the subject which is third person singular here we have my brother does not wake up early in the morning we have used does not and then first form of the verb is used no s or es is added to it when we use do does or did we use first form with them now interrogative sentences interrogative sentences students are of three types single interrogative double interrogative and negative interrogative single interrogative sentence is the sentence which can be answered in yes or no it starts with a helping verb in this case we have do or does as helping verb then comes subject then comes first form of the verb v1 example is do you like mangoes does he play cricket you know where to use do and where to use does and use it accordingly then double interrogative sentences are the interrogative sentences which begin with a wh word wh word do or does plus subject plus v1 this is the rule what do you like to eat where does he play cricket you is in second person so we have used do but he is the third person singular subject so we have used does okay negative interrogative sentences are the interrogative sentences which are negative we use not in these sentences wh word plus do or does plus subject plus not plus v1 not is placed after the subject does he not like mangoes why do you not play tennis these are the examples of negative interrogative sentences in which tense yes the simple present tense now uses of the simple present tense let us see students where to use simple present tense in our writing to tell about a present habit any habitual action or habit when we talk about it if it is happening in present we use simple present tense like my brother plays football he does not like mangoes i do not use my phone in my class do you wash your clothes daily these are the sentences which tell about present habit or habitual action so simple present tense is used to tell a universal or a general truth or a fact universal truth is a truth which is truth everywhere and at every time the sun rises in the east in whichever part of the world you go and whatever time you ask the person will tell you the sun rises in the east it is a universal truth so simple present tense is used here honesty is the best policy it is a general truth 2 and 2 makes 4 it is a fact so we have used simple present tense in these sentences to tell about a future event which is part of a fixed time table or schedule like the lucknow shatabdi express leaves at 8 10 am it is going to leave tomorrow but even today when i tell about the schedule of the departure of shatabdi express lucknow shatabdi express to be specific i use simple present tense because it is the part of the fixed schedule the flight takes off at 9 pm tomorrow same is the case with flight it takes off at 9 pm when tomorrow instead of future tense we are using simple present tense because it is a fixed schedule that we are talking about to introduce a quotation mahatma gandhi says hate the sin love the sinner this is what mahatma gandhi says why says mahatma gandhi is no more he said it but when we are quoting his words exactly as he said we use says simple present tense 
In the same way, Martin Luther King Jr. says, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Same is the case here. It is a quotation and it is introduced with a simple present tense verb. Now we come to simple past tense. Let us study the sentence structure. First is affirmative sentence. It is very simple. With any kind of subject, we have the same rule. Subject plus V2. My father bought a car. Bought is the second form of verb buy. He rested for some time. Rested is the second form of the verb rest. They called him yesterday. Called is the simple past form of call. I told the truth. Told is the simple past of tell. So we have used V2, second form of the verb, with all kinds of subjects. My father is third person singular. He is third person singular. They is third person plural. And I is first person. Now, negative sentences in the simple past tense or past indefinite tense. Subject plus did not plus V1. We use helping verb did here. My father did not buy a car. They did not rest. They did not call him yesterday. I did not tell a lie. We use V1 with it. Here we have used did not in all the sentences. See? And then we have used the first form of the verb, like buy, rest, call and tell. Now, interrogative sentences in which tense? Simple past tense. Single interrogative, double interrogative and negative interrogative. Single interrogative sentences, as I told you, begin with helping verb. And in this case, we are using did. Did plus subject plus V1. Did he take tea? The answer can be either yes or no. Because it is a single interrogative sentence. Then double interrogative sentence begins with a WH word. WH word plus did plus subject plus V1. Where did they go? The negative interrogative sentence WH word plus did plus subject plus not plus V1. The example is why did you not tell the truth? Now let us see the uses of the simple past tense to tell about an action completed in the past. The action which is completed in the past, we tell about it in the simple past tense, usually with past time reference as yesterday, ago, last year. These words and phrases tell us about past time. When these words and phrases are used, usually Simple past tense is used. She came here yesterday. Came. V2. Second form of the verb. And yesterday. I did not tell you a story last night. Last night is again past time reference. And did not tell. Did. The helping verb used for simple past is used. Then first form of the verb is used. And not is placed between. So it is. A negative sentence in the simple past tense. Where did they go? Again, this is simple past and it denotes an action completed in the past. To tell about past habits. For present habits, we used simple present tense and for past habits, we use simple past tense. When I was young, I played hockey. This was my habit when I was young. He worked hard in his school days. In his school days, Tells the time and his habit was he worked hard. In both the cases we have used simple past tense to tell past habit. Now comes simple future or future indefinite tense. The sentence structure is for affirmative sentence subject plus will shall plus we won. We have to note that shall is used with the first person subject but will is used with the second and the third person subject. If the subject is in the first person, that is I or we, we use shall. But for any other subject, we use 
will. I shall help you. I is in first person, so I have used shall. He will take my pen. He is in third person, it is followed by will. You will read this book. You is second person and it again is followed by will. Now negative sentences. Subject plus will shall plus not plus v1. This is the rule. He will not read this book. I shall not eat junk food. We shall not forget our lesson. You will not tell a lie. So after will or shall we place not to form a negative sentence. For interrogative sentences in which tense? In simple future tense. We have the rules for single interrogative, will shall plus subject plus v1. Will he read this book? Double interrogative which begins with wh word. The rule is wh word plus will shall plus subject plus v1. What will he read? This is double interrogative. Where shall I go? Subject is I so shall is used. For negative interrogative we have the rule wh word plus will shall plus subject plus not plus v1. When we are making a negative interrogative sentence, we place not after the subject. Why will he not come to school? Shall I not put your books here? Now uses of simple future tense. To express a future action which cannot be controlled. Something which is to happen in future, you cannot stop it, you cannot control it. I shall be 14 on my next birthday. Supposing a boy is telling his age on his next birthday, he says, I shall be 14. He cannot control it. He shall be 14 and he shall be 14, come what may. Holy we fall in the month of March. This is also something which cannot be controlled. So, both these things which are to take place in future and cannot be controlled are expressed in the simple future tense. To tell about what we think or believe will happen in the future. When we express our opinion about future. I think it will rain today. I see dark clouds. When I come out I say I think it will rain today. This is my opinion. We believe that you will succeed. I see you working very hard. Then we say we believe you will succeed. When we decide to do something at the time of speaking. As we are speaking, we decide at that very moment. There is a mad dog in the street. We are going somewhere, imagine the situation, and I see a mad dog in the street. Then I would say, there is a mad dog in the street. We shall take the other road. This is in simple future tense. Why? Because the decision is taken right at the time of speaking. It is raining, I shall take an umbrella. It is raining. When I come out of the house, I see it is raining. And then I say, it is raining. I shall take an umbrella. This is also decision taken just at the time of speaking. So in both these cases, we have used simple future tense. Now, here are some questions for you. Choose the correct verb form from those in the brackets. The first is the earth dash round the sun. Your options are moved, moves, move. Write down the correct answer. Second is I dash not dash there yesterday. There should be a pair of helping verb and the main verb. So the pair is did go, do go or will go. Whichever you think is correct, note that down. She dash not dash a letter tomorrow. Shall write, will write, does write. Whichever pair you think is right. Note that down. Fourth is, dash you dash the dogs. Does tease, do tease or did teased. Fifth is, next calendar year dash 2021 is, will be or was. Sixth is, he dash his studies in 1990. Options are, starts, will start and started.
Now write down the answers. Let us check your answers now. The answer is, for the first, the earth dash round the sun moves. Why? Because it is a universal truth. It should be expressed in simple present tense. I dash not there yesterday. Yesterday is past time reference. It is used in the simple past tense. So, did go is the right answer. I did not go there yesterday. She dash not a letter tomorrow. The answer is will write. Why? Why not shall write? This is wrong. Why? Because she does not take shall with it. She takes will with it. So, will write is the answer because tomorrow this word signifies future time. So, future tense is to be used. Will write is the correct answer. Dash you dash dogs. Do you tease dogs? This is the right answer. Why? You takes do with it. You is in second person and second person takes do. And then comes first form of the verb. Did teased is wrong. Because did cannot be followed by the second form of the verb. Next calendar year will be 2021. Why? Will be? Because this is a future event calendar year 2021, this is a future event which cannot be controlled. He dashed his studies in 1990. He started his studies in 1990 because 1990 is past time reference. We use simple past tense with past time reference. Hope you have got all your answers correct. Now today we have learnt forms of tenses, the structure of different types of sentences, in the simple present, the simple past and the simple future tense. The uses of the simple present, the simple past and the simple future tense. Here is an assignment for you. Today we have learnt the uses of the simple present, the simple past and the simple future tense. Write two sentences each for all the uses of these tenses. We have read different uses of these tenses. You have to write two sentences for each use. Okay? Thank you and good luck for your studies.